Hello, hello, this is the Digital Loop Season 4, Episode 11. Hi, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul, very happy to be back. And uh, hi, everybody. Yeah, hi, we've both been on, on travels. We'll talk a bit about those during the show. Today, uh, I got inspired by someone I saw. I was invited by Condi Nast in Moscow uh, last week uh, to talk about the future of marketing. And there was this girl called Billy Whitehouse on stage uh, just uh, before me, I think. Uh, and she does really cool stuff. She does something, she does wearables and fabric. So basically, she puts... All these devices we've been talking about, you know, we always talk about the phone, but we talked about all the de devices around us. She basically puts it on fabric. It, the, the, the idea started with her with one that was pretty pretty fun because she works with Durex. I know, I'm sure you know Durex, uh, Ivan. And she actually put uh, tactile underwear. So basically, you'd be able, if with your partner, to actually touch your partner remotely with your phone and his or her underwear or bras, etc. So that was the first idea. So that's a bit of a tactile. Of course, it's a bit of a gimmick, but that was, was a fun thing. It was, I think, two years ago. Then she moved on into doing something similar, which I know you like sports. That was pretty interesting uh, with Australian football because she's uh, originally from Australia, although she lives now in New York. Whereas uh, the players would have sensors on their bodies where they were playing football. And when you were watching the game, you'd be able to buy a T-shirt that would have a similar type of sensors which give you the sensations of what the player would have. So if the player was, uh, for instance, stressed out because he was about to shoot the ball, then you would feel some kind of beating in your chest. If the player was being hit because Australian football is kind of a violent, in bracket sports, you would also feel this kind of active feedback uh, so, uh, on, on your body. Another way to, so these are, these two examples obviously are a bit gimmicky for some. It's, it's true that maybe they're not revolutionizing by themselves the, uh, the entire uh, world. But what I found interesting is that it shows the way of what I just mentioned, the fact that devices are surrounding us more and more. They're, we're going, we're stepping away from uh, this phone-centric world where everything happens in front of a screen in front of you, but everything happens around you, even on you, on fabric. Uh, and I thought that that was pretty pretty interesting. Would you, would you carry such a T-shirt and watch some uh, Australian football? I don't know even if you even watch Australian football, actually. <laughs> no, no, I don't watch Australian football, but I can, I can fully understand uh, how having that experience um, we go back always to the to the element of experience. Uh, how cool would it be to, for example, if you are really passionate about the sport or passionate about your team, if you can really share that experience with with the players? I think that this is something that that definitely has a lot of potential. Gimmicky, maybe as you as you mentioned, but I can see that that going in that direction. I, I also think that this is an extremely extremely interesting topic from the point of view that uh, uh, as we talk about the wearables wearables uh, market is growing and growing and growing yet there's still a lot of people that are not yet comfortable with the idea of wearing all these devices all these accessories uh, i have the impression that uh, um, most of the time people have not really embraced uh, wearable technology from the point of view that they feel that they are wearing gadgets and uh, the moment that they make this transition from having a gadget in your wrist or on your face into actually the stuff that you're wearing all of a sudden that gadget feeling is no longer there what right. the value of this of this uh, of these microscopic or, or or small devices let's say um yeah i think, so I think I, I, it was uh, so i was working with her after the event and i was exchanging a bit with her and uh, because i said okay these are really cool but i mentioned the word gimmicky and but i understood that our mission uh, i think our company is called wearable experiments uh, wearableexperiments.com i'll put the link in the show note but our mission is really like like you just uh, hinted at is to kind of integrate everything like the fact to stop having these devices look stupid or geeky on you but to have everything integrated seamlessly in the well she, she did another experiment where for instance you had uh, another fabric because of course she's into fabric but we could talk about any other uh, thing where your uh, your clothes would actually hint at you where you were walking and you you know usually now when you're walking and you look 
uh, of, on driving directions or walking directions in that case, you have to look uh, down on your phone or if you have an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or whatever, you'll have probably a little screen to tell you. And she says that there was a haptic feedback within the, 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 the fabric, which actually would hint at you, oh, now you have to turn left, now you have to turn right. Again, maybe some people will not feel comfortable with that, but the idea for her is to seamlessly integrate and create that experience that you don't have to carry wear devices on you, but everything, you, you as a human, are integrated with your environment. And I, and I found that uh, pretty inspiring, actually. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I mean, when you look at also the numbers, I was looking here at some numbers that say that the smart garments are predicted to grow from 100,000 units shipped in 2014 to 26 million units shipped <laughs> in 2016. I mean, that's just crazy. And yes, I mean, the more and more, I think that the, the barrier to of acceptance uh, is gonna be is gonna be a lot a lot faster to for many people to go because exactly you don't feel like you're wearing a gadget, and actually, uh, uh, I think it's gonna be easier for people to, to to take it. Also from the point of view of health, I mean, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, I am very I, I I like gadgets and I like devices. So yes, every once in a while when they have the opportunity to try something new, I go for it. And for a long time, most of these devices were uh, were focused on the fitness wear. So uh, you have the the, the, the the fuel bands, you have the different devices that you can put on your body. But as we can see now, going into the level of your clothing and actually having an impact on your on your fitness, this is something that I think has a lot of potential. Uh, Under Armour recently, they presented at CES uh, uh, their connected sneakers, which basically they have accelerometers and they have many different sensors on the shoe. And, uh, and you have the opportunity to record and analyze uh, your, your, your runs uh, and, and keep record of everything. Now, this is not something new. Nike did this in the past where, where you will get a shoe, a special shoe, where you will put a chip inside the shoe and this will record everything and bring it to your iPod. But it's really, really cool to see that this is going forward and the technology says it, it, it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So this also will have an impact on the way on the way we we, we treat our bodies and on the way we take care of ourselves. Uh, and I think that this is a lot of potential. But also, I'm just running here. Uh, but this is not just only about measurements or fitness or health, but actually has an impact on, for example, uh, how you look. I mean, at the end of the day, there is a lot of people that they are not uh, that that focus on. On, on diet and fitness and workouts. Uh, but I was reading about this company called uh, Rainbow Winters. They have created uh, garments that respond to the environment. So if, for example, you are at a concert and the volume of the music starts getting uh, louder and louder, the, 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 there will be a holograms that will, be, that will react to the sound. As well as, for example, if you're wearing a bathing suit and you're outside and there is a nice sun, the sunnier it gets, the brighter it goes, it gets the, 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 the swimming suit. So it brings elements of individuality. It gives you the opportunity to make a statement, not just by what you're wearing, but actually uh, how your clothes react to the environment. And I think that that's also something that is going to make it uh, more attractive for more and more people, as, as you are not just wearing a simple T-shirt or a simple blouse, but you're actually... Uh, being part of an experience and sharing that experience with your with your environment. Uh, soon enough, Ivan will wear one of these very crazy outfits by Lady Gaga. They actually made uh, some of them are made by Studio XO here in London. Uh, but I think fitness, although you're right, although the market is not limited to fitness, fitness is a great tie-in because since it's a niche. People are really heavily into it. We've seen the success of basically all the wearable, the current wearable technologies, the Fitbits, et cetera, are mostly due to, to fitness nuts, the fact that you can track your runs, track your health. And I think this is why uh, the fabric, uh, we're seeing the uptick there at first. We're seeing, like you mentioned, Nike, but we're seeing other brands are moving there because uh, I know you, you do uh, the Spartan race, for instance. How cool would it be that your T-shirts and your pants and your shoes, all of them are connected and are feeding back information back to a server where then you can actually read all your information, how you were actually reacting during the uh, during the race, I, I've spoken. Uh, I was last week as well in Dubai. I've spoken to um, Daniel, Daniel Bruzlovsky, is the head of innovation for the Warriors, the NBA team, 
And he was telling me how, I mean, of course, it's more advanced because they are a team, they are professional sportsmen, uh, but how they were using similar tracking and haptic systems uh, on them whilst they were training. So uh, the, the trainer, then the coach would be able to say, hey, Ivan, you know what? We, I think you need a day off tomorrow or you need to take cool because you've actually overdid it today, for instance. I mean, I'm talking a very simple example. They were also augmenting the way they were, the tactics that they were playing on the ground because they were able to see visualizations of how the players are interacting with each other. This happens, of course, during training because, uh, of course, the NBA rules prevents you to have like 25,000 wearables where you actually play an official game. But that shows the way, you know, it's like Formula One. Uh, for, for the longest time, Formula One, a lot of the innovation that happens in Formula One then trickle down uh, to cars. It's the same thing I, I think is, is happening here. So I think that's why fitness, because it's a niche, because people are heavily into it, it's uh, and because it's useful to have this data fed, fed, fed back to you. It is uh, the, the other thing, obviously, is, and you mentioned that correctly as well, I think, Ivan, is the health. Uh, it's beyond fitness. Is the fact that we've already seen that the Apple Watch has a sensor that tracks your um, heart rate. More stuff, imagine this is a fabric, so this can be on you at all times, and it can actually locate multiple points on your body, whether it's on your arm, your chest, etc. So again, there will be there, I'm sure, also more uh, technologies that will help us uh, get better feedback about simply our health. Even if we're not exercising, but you should exercise, guys. If, if you're not exercising a lot, you would have some kind of feedback prevention. We've heard about many startups that say, oh, you're about to have a heart attack. So for, for instance, because you can detect some anomalies on your body, same thing here. So it's not only about, you know, it's beyond gimmicky, but it's true as well, and I totally agree with you uh, about the, fa the, the statement, the fashion statement I was about to say, because of course I was with Condé Nast, so they're all about fashion, but, and, and the same thing happens, the same movement, you know, from Formula One to cars, the same thing happened from high-end fa high fashion to, uh, and I mentioned Lady Gaga, or to, uh, to common uh, fashion uh, or, or fast fashion, is that we'll, we'll see more of this personalization. We've been talking, you and me, Ivan, a lot on this show about how more and more personal this world is around us, how we can fine tune our experience cater to us only. The same thing, of course, like you said, would happen with clothing where you could have something that's really similar to you. Imagine how cool it would be that you can program your clothes. Uh, you could actually tell them to look like this today and look like that tomorrow or change according to some variables you would have set yourself plus others that maybe the, the manufacturer would have said. That would be really cool. But then I'll finish with that. It's also something beyond again the gimmick and the personal statement thing it's also for instance we talk about uv how new technologies can also create the fabric that will adapt uh, again for fitness you know how current fabrics respire better than they used to 20 years ago the same thing will happen with you know the U amount of uvs we already have seen that and other this environment around ourselves that we don't see don't when i say don't see we cannot really know how much uv we're getting right we have kind of a feeling because it's sunny or it's not how much of this other useful data we could we could get and i found that pretty fascinating i have a normal wool t-shirts nothing special but i would actually think about trying this stuff out and i'm sure you would as well right absolutely i mean uh the, the value is there and 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 you know I, w while researching for the show if we found some some interesting cases of uh, at the end of the day is of course that there's the element of health the element of fitness the element of fashion but also uh, up to a certain point for example there's the element of utility mm -hmm. um there is an interesting company called uh, uh, wearable solar wearable solar they have uh, been working on develop developing flexible solar panels that uh, they have introduced them to the to their to their fabric, and basically what you can do, you can they have produced wire garments, very lightweight garments that enable you to charge your phone. So you could charge half of your fifty uh, percent of your of your phone if you were just walking outside for half an hour. Nice. So for an hour. So so again, we're going back to the element of of um, utility. Uh, I think that this is something that is it's it's 
you know, it can be studied with your phone, but it can be also with different, 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 uh, different gadgets, different devices. Uh, that at the end of the day, you know, the reality is that also we as a society we have we have become very attached to our devices, especially our phones. So having this opportunity to 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 have this additional value, this utility, uh, I think that this is something that could be also very very interesting to experience in the future. Yes, and I would definitely uh, try one of these and. And again, you know, I like my fashion. I'm probably not. I was not probably the best for once, not the best dressed guy on stage because, of course, everybody else was wearing these fancy stuff <laughs> that are completely, you know, uh, ahead of their the, the season or something. But yes, I, I do agree. Uh, it's still early. Uh, to, uh, looping back to to Billy uh, Billy Whitehouse, uh, she was showing me some pictures. And of course, a lot of the experiments are really experiments. You see the wires all over, the trying stuff. But this is what is is great. And and she she came from a background. She 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 was in Australia, or I think, or or two siblings were like some Olympic medalists or something. And she wanted to do something else. And she started with like a thousand dollars in her pocket, meaning that that's the other that's the other message here. All of us could try and do the thing we experiment. We try. Well, I, I'm not. I think the term hacker is being overused these days. But this is a bit the, the, the kind of movement, the makers, a hackers movement. You're trying stuff. You create these little things, and this is why Ivan and myself keep traveling to see a lot of uh, startups in corners of the world that nobody has heard of, to to see how you know how they come up with ideas that will probably some of them change the way we dress here or change the way we, we learn about our health. And I think this is absolutely uh, and utterly uh, fascinating. It will keep actually traveling. You were in um, where were you? Macedonia you were last week, right? Yeah, I was in, I was in Macedonia. I was uh, partaking party, uh, which was a 32-hour hackathon. Nice. Uh, uh, and it was really, really, really exciting, really exciting to see. The room was packed. I don't know how many hundreds of people were there. There were some 13, 14-year-old kids that they stayed there for 32 hours coding and competing against the rest. It was really cool because at, at the beginning, the, the organizers offered to, to create a special category for them, but they say, no, we are here to take part, to be part of the of the community, and we want to be with everybody else. And and, and I think that's fascinating. And yes, a lot of these, these things were working in, in many, many, many different interesting things, not just on making a simple app or something, something that, that that is just the same as somebody else has done. They were trying some a lot of new different stuff. And yes, Macedonia, you know, it's it's a small little country in the south of Europe that has a lot a lot of potential. Yeah, I mean, we we've seen. I was there last year. I hope to to come back uh, this year actually. But yeah, and I was uh, in Hong Kong, for instance. Uh, so current China, obviously. And talking about wearables, that's amazing. How and I keep going back there. How more, you know, how fast it's commoditized. How fast something like uh, a Fitbit watch or an Apple watch, which are still the you know the high end of the market. I mean, Apple is almost a luxury. It's the number one luxury brand in the world. Some would argue, but how you could find a lot of of watches and wearables for like. A, Honestly, a dollar or something. I mean, of course, some of them might not be a great experience to use, but that shows us the, the, the speed at which we go from, oh, this I've seen that in Star Trek, to, oh, I can buy that for $10. And the same probably yeah. will happen with some of these technologies we are, we're talking today about, which are, of course, on fabric, but it could be something else. It's really the, the, the speed of the deflation, the speed of the price reduction of this thing is, is pretty staggering. So uh, we'll, we'll probably yeah. be talking in two seasons here on the Digital Loop about <laughs> some uh, T-shirts we'll both be wearing, which will automatically record our voices or something. I don't know, but it's, it's, it's truly fascinating, and we'll both keep an eye on those technologies and uh, yeah. and hopefully we're still here in two seasons. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, we will for sure. Actually, you just remind me of a very interesting project that uh, I have it somewhere here written down. Uh, Google teaming up together with Levi's. Oh, yeah, They've true. They've been yes. working right. on a project called Jacquard. Jacquard, uh, yeah. Uh, or ja Jacquard. Jacquard, Jacquard. Jacquard, je parle français très bien. <laughs> um, that this is a fabric that can interact with the, with their smartphones and different devices. So the fact that Google and Levi's are working together, Levi's is you know a very popular brand. I think that they, of course maybe at the beginning is not as you know regular t-shirts and jeans, but as you mentioned, the fact that the prices are going down and down, and these companies are involved, 
uh, tells me that you know probably the in the not so distant future we're gonna be able to have at affordable prices uh, you know this type of smart fabric that that allows us to interact with our devices and it allows us to get additional value so at the end of the day it's not about the gadget but it's about the value that you get from those gadgets uh, and from those devices so so if you are uh, producing or working on this type of industry just keep up that keep that in mind that you know very often, if you can provide value, if you can enhance the experience, that's what at the end of the day is going to make a big difference uh, and not just you know technology for technology's sake. I agree. I'm not a Levi's guy, I'm a D-square guy, but I, I still agree and I hope they come up as well with some cool stuff to try on. On that, uh, Ivan, I'll see you in the next episode, uh, hopefully sooner than the gap we'd had between the past two, but we've both been traveling quite extensively. And, uh, and maybe next time I'll see you with a smart t-shirt. Absolutely. And remember, if you want to know more about us, you can go to thedigitalloop.co. As always. And uh, of course, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Both of us were trained Snapchat <laughs> after the last episode. Yeah, of course. Where we talk a lot about Snapchat. So, so follow us on Snapchat. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook. Just, just follow us everywhere. And uh, well, have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Ciao.